member from Parkdale High Park. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And first and foremost, uh, like my predecessor in this debate, I want to thank everyone who's here uh, representing many different organizations from Canadian Kennel Club uh, to Dog Legislation Council of Canada. Uh, certainly, uh, veterinarian associations have also uh, supported us in this. In fact, I can't think of any organization that really loves animals, that supports animals, that doesn't support us on this. And so I want to thank you for all your activism over the last seven years and all your trials and tribulations because you know uh, there was this incredible outroar mr speaker about the death of a hundred sled dogs in bc we all read about that a hundred sled dogs euthanized and yet here we live in a province where by conservative estimates thousands of dogs have been euthanized not because of anything they've done but simply because of the way they look now, if Ontarians were to truly know these facts, and trust me, they are beginning to wake up to these facts, judging from the thousands of emails we received. I think my office gets seven to ten per day for the last many years that I've been elected. And uh, certainly from the petitions, again, thousands of petitions that have been signed. And certainly from people in my own constituency who call our office, we know that the word is getting out there. We know that Across Ontario, people are outraged when they actually know the truth behind this bill. Uh, Caesar Milan said it best, I, said, I think. He said, in the 70s, they banned Dobermans. In the 80s, they, they, oh, sorry, in the 70s, they blamed Dobermans. In the 80s, they blamed Rottweilers. In the 90s, they blamed pit bulls and still blame pit bulls. When will they blame humans? <laughs> we know. We know that the owners of dangerous dogs are dangerous people. We know that it's the deed, it's not the breed. We know that German Shepherds, we know that Labrador Retrievers, we know that Chihuahuas are as capable of biting. The stats show, in fact, that German Shepherds and Huskies, for example, are more capable of biting than so-called pit bulls, keeping in mind the reality that there is no such thing as a pit bull. Uh, we know this. These are the facts. These have been borne out by scientific studies around the world. Uh, to speak to uh, some of the heckling that came from the member from Willowdale, uh, the, one of the expert witnesses, by the way, who actually was used by the McGuinty cabinet and by the then Attorney General when they first brought in this bill, uh, was a city dog catcher in Toledo, Ohio. He was the expert witness. You know what happened to him? He got fired. You know what happened in Ohio? They overturned the breed-specific ban because it wasn't based on evidence. You know where else they've overturned it? They've overturned it in Banff, Vancouver, New Brunswick, all repealed, Montana, Netherlands, Scotland, Germany, Italy, that breed, uh, the ban, by the way, 90 different breeds, Sweden, in fact, most of Europe, UK and Australia and New Zealand are all going through the same process we are here. It's just a matter of time, folks, before this ridiculous and cruel legislation is put to rest around the world. There's no doubt about that. In fact, I find this a really telling statistic. 12 U.S. states have laws prohibiting breed-specific bans, <laughs> prohibiting them, yeah. prohibiting them. That's the situation around the world. Anybody who watched the Westminster Dog Show, who loves dog shows, I know that we have members here who breed dogs. Uh, whoever watched that show would have seen paraded around the ring, American pit bulls, American Staffordshire Terriers as champions. Whoever has watched The Dog Whisperer, the most famous dog trainer in the world, will know that Daddy was his dog that trained other dogs and that now Junior, another pit bull so-called, is training other dogs. He uses them as his go-to dogs for training. The most famous dog trainer in the world, who, by the way, when he came to Toronto, wasn't allowed to bring his dog here for fear the dog would be snatched and euthanized. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, 
when, uh, when I first introduced this bill, Hershey's Law, and I want to say just a word of shout out to Hershey, the therapy dog who can no longer do therapy because guess what? He meets the definition of a pit bull. When, when I first was elected and first introduced this bill, I earned, uh, I earned the distinction of having quote of the year by French CBC, and, and this was approximately what I said. I said, the way the bill is crafted by description only, uh, it says things like broad shoulders, it says things like short hair, it says things like wide forehead. It would describe most of the male members of this House. Uh, except, I said, for the long skinny tail, and we can't tell that because they wear trousers. I mean, the, pers the average person on the street gets how ridiculous this is. I tell Labrador Retriever owners their dog fits the definition of this bill. Now, of course, they would never pick on Labrador Retrievers because they could prove they were purebreds. But anything short of a purebred that's not a so-called pit bull look-alike is absolutely at risk. My dog is at risk. I have an English bull terrier named Victoria. She's the love of our family's life. Now, she's not covered by this bill. Why not, I say? Well, Don Cherry has one. Maybe that's why not. I don't know. Celebrities have them. Maybe we don't go after celebrities. In fact, that's another interesting aspect of this bill. You don't see them driving to the streets of Rosedale or Forest Hill picking dogs out of those people's backyards. You see them targeting those people that can't fight back. That's what they do. So they're targeting seniors, new immigrants, people without the financial resources to hire a lawyer to fight this bill. Uh, that's a shameful, shameful aspect of this bill, and we know that's the way it's being implemented. You know, if you're looking at our health, uh, if you're looking at our health, this bill actually threatens our health, the health of Ontarians. Why? because it focuses on the breed and not on the deed. It ties up our precious animal control services in hauling away innocent dogs because of the way they look and not looking at dogs that aren't so innocent and the owners, by the way, who are the guiltiest of all. If we want to strengthen dangerous dog legislation, and we do, everyone in this House does, we want to look at ways of getting at the owners and holding them liable for what their dog does, whether it's a Chihuahua, a Husky, a German Shepherd, or something that meets the definition of this bill. Hold the owners liable. And the other piece of the coin, as you've heard already, is education. We have to educate children and others how to approach dogs, what to do around dogs, and this is what's proven to be effective in every other jurisdiction. Uh, you know, even the Attorney General, bless his cotton socks, who introduced this bill, could not pick a pit bull out of a lineup. We know that because we asked him to, and he picked the wrong dog. The reality is there are very, very few purebred American pit bulls or American Stafford shears, anyway, I think two, about 200 in Ontario, and yet there have been thousands of dogs killed. So who are these dogs? What are these dogs? I'll tell you who they are and what they are. They're dogs whose owners gave up the fight or couldn't afford to fight back. That's the true tragedy. It could cost tens of thousands of dollars to hire experts and lawyers to try to prove your dog is not something that what? fits, the, fits the, the bill, which, as I said, just describes every male member of this, of this chamber, not to mention most of our dogs and, by the way, most of the dogs in the shelters. Thank you, Toronto Humane Society and other humane societies who stood up for animals, because, you know, if you look through the animals that are there to be adopted, you're going to see lots of animals that fit the description of this bill. Do we want to euthanize them, too? That's sad, that's cruel, that's immoral. That's what this bill is. Um, how to sum up. It seems like a long time, my friends, who are all here. A long time. A lot of money's been spent. A lot of rallies have been gone to. A lot of defenses have been entered into. A lot of jurisdictions have gone through this. This has tied up the time and the effort of thousands, in fact, I'd say tens of thousands of people around the world for a bill and bills, by the way, that have been rescinded in other jurisdictions one by one, whose time has simply passed.
It was a bill that was brought in because of media hype around a couple of bites. It was a bill that was used in the worst possible political way to pander to the worst possible human instincts. It had nothing to do with the dogs. But if it's your dog, if it's your dog, and you know who I'm speaking to out there, because it may be your dog, who's picked up and taken away and you have to fight to get it back or watch it euthanized, my goodness, it ceases to be about this place. It ceases to be about laws. It ceases to be about scientific studies, and it becomes about something far more important. And that is a beloved member of your family, a friend to your children, a comrade at arms, a dog that protects you, loves you, and looks after you. It becomes about them. And that's why everyone is here today. And that's why tens of thousands of Ontarians have appealed to their MPPs to say, please do the right thing, because they recognize that this is about their dog. And it could be about your dogs. It could be about your dogs. It could be about uh, you know, the Minister of Children and Family Services and Education. It could be about her sharp pay. It could be about somebody else's mixed breed. You know, because if they come for the pit bulls first, they're going to come for the English bull terriers or the bulldogs next or the German shepherds or the Dobermans. They're going to come for any dog that ever bites anyone and say, ha, look, here we have a danger. So, my friends, let's start where we are. Let's uh, stop the insanity, let's overturn this bill, and let's leave people and their pets in peace finally and let these people go back home to pat their dogs and go for a walk. Thank you. Further debate? The member from Niagara Falls. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker.